respected chairpersons and my friends. I'm going to share with you uh, one of our nightmares in the cat lab. This is a one-year-old girl who has a failure to thrive, has bounding pulses and continuous murmur, and was diagnosed to have PDA. This is the X-ray chest, shows near normal heart size with plethoric lung fields. And this is an echo. I think all of you will agree with me, one year old, more than five kgs, is a slam dunk. This is the angiographic picture. Anybody in the audience has a doubt that this is not a straightforward case of PDA? I think this is the case which will be done by fellows in most of the institutes. And so we go ahead and use a six by four duct occluder. This is uh, not Amplatza duct occluder, it's from LifeTech. And this is a case which was done a few years back. So we get into the uh, aortic ampulla and then we release. And you look at the, uh, the kind of uh, pinch that we have on the device. I think looks that the device is placed absolutely perfectly. And that's an angiogram, little bit of jutting out of the disc into the aorta, but no significant obstruction. And if you look at it in the RAO projection, I think there is enough space in the aorta. So we thought that it was time to release, and then we release. Even at this stage, I never thought that this would really turn out to be a nightmare. This looks pretty well positioned, and uh, there is a good pinch here, and there is a little bit of foaming into the pulmonary artery. I mean, anybody wants to make any comment, you can stop me. I mean, this looks pretty good to my eyes. Anybody thinks otherwise? Bharat? Yes, please. This looks very nice, but the waist looks disappear now. Any, any possibility that actually the duct gets sparsum and then you undersizing it? Uh, I think echo very clearly showed that the duct was 2.5, okay. 2.6 yeah. millimeters. Even both the angiograms in RAO and lateral showed that uh, things were okay. Mm. When we deployed the device, the pinch on the device was absolutely yeah, adequate. It looks, it looks for very me to clear, think. but now it's getting less the waste. Yeah. So, yes, Jay. The, <clears throat> looking at the, the long axis of, what, of the device, it is uh, a little bit uh, different from the usual case. It is that uh, the, uh, the proximal part of uh, the PA side of the device is uh, pointing the the cephalot direction, and it, it, I don't know about the, this device from LifeTech, but they, is the delivery system is a, still stiffer than usual the Amplaza device? Yeah, it's more or less equal in stiffness, mm -hmm. maybe marginally more, but nothing, uh, mm -hmm. no significant difference. And is there any jump on the release? There was some jump on the release, oh. but a usual jump, mm -hmm. nothing extraordinary happening. So in this kind of a uh, relatively small patient, in, uh, the, I usually support from the, the aortic side with uh, some stiff, uh, the guide, uh, stiff tip of the guide wire inside the pigtail with uh, some curvature and support the aortic side and the jump may uh, prevent, uh, it, it, it may prevent uh, the, some device shifting to, to the aortic side even at the jump of the device. So, so you put yeah. only the wire or a balloon? And uh, put uh, some shape that the hard tip of the guide wire, put inside the, the carefully put inside the, the pigtail, then the curvature is uh, directed to, to the, uh, the device. device, then it supports. And then the, release. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Frank. Um, do you have the other view on this? Uh, not after release, really. Okay. The only view I had was before release. The, the reason I, I'm a little concerned, and of, of course, this is looking at it backwards. If you go back to the last picture, if, yeah. and where the, um, not the uh, retainer, but the ductal, the part that sits in the PDA, I don't, I'm not convinced that the, the, the pulmonary end of the device is sitting in the MPA, but that it might still be sitting within the ductus itself. Because I don't see, you know, oftentimes when you have the little indentation, you'll see that the, the edge of the device sits inside the MPA, but the way that contrast flows is almost up against the vessel. So I'm a little worried that the device, it's not in the MPA. What do you think is this contrast? I thought that this was a main pulmonary artery and we were well yes, into the pulmonary. Yes, that is, but it's not, it doesn't look like the device is stuck into the uh, pulmonary. I know that uh, one time one of my colleagues had this 
the device, I don't know which way it embolized, but his embolized down the order. And when we went back and looked at it, the tip of the device was, wasn't in the MPA, it was still in the ductus, and they, based on the angles, it slipped down. But I don't, I mean, I'm just guessing right now. Uh, Bharat, can I uh, oh. bring you back to the first, Andrew? Yeah. Sure. Just, I mean, we are debating and discussing the, uh, and now we know you had problems, so that's why we are courageous. For example, uh, this, uh, this duct, in, uh, I, I would have put a coil from the start. I think so. In retrospect, and, I would. And you, I mean, you are also aware, like you use coils. Yeah, absolutely. The young and colleagues yep, in, and in I, my center, they never used coils, no. and that's why they have to use this device. But we have the options to choose it. Yeah, absolutely. I think coil is a great option in yeah. this case, and if I were to uh, think retrospectively, maybe coil was a better option than device. Uh, can so, I ask quick, ask quick, quick yeah. comments, please. Yeah. And, so, um, the, on the pulmonary artery angiogram and the initial chest x ray, the left side of pulmonary blood flow seems to be a little more than the right side. So, in the, and the PDA uh, seems to be small. So, in that case, I'm worrying about the possibility of additional pulmonary blood flow source to the right side was. Uh, any problem in rapid pul uh, right pulmonary vein? Uh, pulmonary vein, you mean? Yeah, or is there additional pulmonary blood flow to the right lung? No, at but least... On the initial chest x ray, the right pulmonary uh, blood flow seems to be a little um, more than the left side. I think uh, some and of the vascularity in the left lung is retrocardiac, maybe not well projected here, but on the actual X-ray, uh, you see a good left pulmonary artery here. And on echo, both the pulmonary arteries were really good-sized without any evidence of uh, pulmonary artery stenosis or even, for that matter, any pinching of the pulmonary artery. So uh, as uh, uh, the concerns were raised by many of, the, uh, many of my friends, I think uh, that is what happened, that... Uh, a uh, baby next morning was seen. I don't know when this event occurred, but baby was found to be irritable, bounding pulses, and lower limb pulses were weak, and there was a reappearance of continuous murmur. And the worst had happened, actually. I think this is one of the worst complications of ADO1 falling into the aorta in a baby who is five to six kgs. Believe me, it's one of the most difficult devices to, uh, to snare and retrieve in presence of, uh, in, uh, when the babies are small. So what we did is that we wanted to cross the ductus and get the sheath into the aorta, but it could not be done because the device was so close unless we got the device a little down. So this is how we uh, get the device while doing this struggling over here. We got the device into the descending thoracic aorta and then over the wire we get the sheath in the meantime, we have also got an arterial axis so that uh, in case we decide to use something else to stabilize the device, we always have one artery and one vein. Now, this is the first time we are retrieving ADO1. So we have done many stupid things, and you'll have to bear with me. So this is, uh, this is how it uh, looks. Uh, there is some flow. It's not completely occluded. So we come with a snare of this size, which I think is uh, quite a stupid thing to do. In order to grab this screw on the pulmonary end, you will need a much smaller snare. The difficulty in ADO1 is that there is a deep well on the pulmonary side. So to get the snare inside is not very easy. What do you do then? So we thought that we will stabilize the device and try and hold it uh, with both the ends. So we come with a bioptome here, try to hold the device. Uh, we can't drag it down because of, the, uh, because of the concerns of trauma to the aorta. So in doing that, we are able to grab the device, but not by the screw, but by the neck. Now, what do you do? Even if you grab by the neck, getting it into the sheath is almost an impossibility. Look at the malalignment here. Look at this malalignment. There is no way you can get it in. And at that time, this is many years back, I did not know Jay's technique of putting another snare and trying to you know, play around with both the snares so as to make it, uh, uh, make it coaxial with the sheath. So then I said that why not bring it back? So we get the device back into the 
into the uh, aorta and try and grab it with the other snare. So we use a smaller snare, but the moment you grab the uh, device with a larger snare, the, the screw tends to go even deep inside. And then the access to the screw is even more difficult. So we thought that we'll get the device back into the ductus. And here it comes, back into the ductus. And I thought, oh, man, I have achieved what I wanted to. So I make an angiogram here. And this is because of the snare tugging onto the duct. You have the ascending aorta getting pulled and some amount of uh, coronary stretch. And that's why a little bit of compromise on ventricular pumping. And that's why the contrast tends to remain in the aorta for a longer time. Now you imagine, again, with the duct perfectly sitting on the aortic end, the moment I release, it drops back into the aorta. I don't understand this, really speaking. There are two things happening. Either my uh, proximal end is not coming into the pulmonary artery, or the memory of the device is so poor that it just doesn't stand the aortic ampulla. And I'm open to suggestions or comments or criticisms to this particular statement. I'm not sure what actually happens but this uh, device just refuses to sit there and drops back into the aorta. And as I said, when things start going wrong... Uh, Bharat, can I ask you something? Did you do in between another angel? Probably you didn't have time. No, I didn't do it. Because anything. we had at least three times that the PDA changed its size and the, the, its type. Like we positioned two coils in a PDA, remember? and send them to the ward. And in the afternoon, somehow, I wanted to listen my, my stethoscope, and there was a continuous murmur. And what happened is both coils embolized. We took to the cath lab, and the PDA changed completely. Yeah, I And mean, it was like, I remember it was eight months old, the child. No, that was one of the issues which was raised about the ductal spasm. But uh, echo was really convincing. And second thing, with ductal spasm, I would have understood device getting onto the pulmonary side, but getting it back into the aorta. No, but the PDA can change in both directions. It can close, but it can also open. Open. Okay. Bharat, may yes, I please. just make it? Did you uh, consider calling your collaborating surgeon? Yeah, absolutely, I, I did. No, I think, no, I think it's a, it's a but you know, uh, in the setting in which I work, really, getting these devices out of thoracic and abdominal aorta, in those years, now I work with, uh, in a much better setting with much better surgeons, but was not uh, so easy. And so, you know, I had to bite the bullet. I mean, otherwise, I would be the first person to call the surgeon and let him uh, take care of this child. And so, as I said earlier, uh, you know, when things go wrong, you start doing more and more stupid things. So we thought that we would be able to stick this uh, device into the duct by using a balloon, but that never happened. And you can see that, the whole device coming back. And then you become even more desperate. So I said that now uh, I'm almost sunk because the baby was getting a little sick. So I hold this here, get my six French sheath right into the uh, right into the aorta and then i grab the aortic end of the ductus and i am really lucky that i could slenderize and get the device out the story doesn't end here this patient is transferred to icu very stormy course has he iv hemolysis i don't know the exact mechanism whatever the reasons when goes into arf peritoneal dialysis recovers in 5 to 6 days and then i send this baby home thinking that since I have screwed up the case so much, the family will go to some other doctor for getting the duct closed. Three months later, the family comes back and says, no, we want you only to do this duct. So brought back to the cath lab, clinically stable, continuous murmur, and this is what I have done. I have paid a huge price for this uh, desperate measure to get the, get the device out, but at the cost of saving the baby's life probably. We have uh, really uh, got the uh, iliac and the femoral closed. But the collaterals are good, and the length is of the limb is good without any problems with the function of the lower limb. And again, you can see this. And this time, we thought that maybe it was a long duct. Maybe we didn't get into the, into the uh, pulmonary end of the ductus. So we use ADO2. And that's after the release in RAO position. And that's after 
release in lateral projection. So what did we learn from this case? The device can embolize even if properly sized, and I take into uh, consideration the concept of ductal spasm, but I was very sure that there was no spasm. This duct was of the same size even after the embolization, during the next sitting, and all throughout. The screw of ADO1 is very, very difficult to grab, and you should use the smallest possible snare and not a large snare. Holding the device at both ends is always a good strategy because you can snare it or you can grab it with the help of a bioptome. Repositioning the device as we did with the help of a snare may not always work because I thought in the case of this device, probably the memory of this device was not the best. And sometimes desperate measures may pay off, but at a cost. So aortic embolization of ADO1 is truly a nightmare. And last but not the least, no interventions are ever a slam dunk. Thanks for your patient hearing, ladies and gentlemen.